Hi, boys and girls. I am back today with another story for you. This is another one from our author, Kevin Hankies. Last, uh, or not la last week, the other day, we read Sheila Ray, The Brave, and we kind of took a close look at those illustrations to see how the, uh, or how the illustrator can show how a character is feeling. We saw with a lot of different facial expressions and kind of what the character is doing with their body, we were able to see when a character was feeling, you know, brave, happy, sad, angry, or maybe even crazy. So those were the different ways that the illustrator could show a character's feelings. Today, with our story, Julius, the baby of the world, I'll put the cover up right here for you. We are going to take a closer look at listening to how the author can tell us how a character is feeling. So sometimes when, you know, we might get really mad at a brother or a sister, maybe we get mad, you know, at a friend, or even sometimes we might even get mad at our mom and dad. And sometimes when we get really angry, we might say things that, you know, are really hurtful and we don't really mean them. But when we're angry, we just kind of say things, you know, you might say, oh, I hate my brother. I hate my sister. Or, you know, I don't want to play with you anymore out on the playground. You're not my friend anymore. We might say those things, and we don't mean them, but when we say those things, it can really hurt someone's feelings. So we kind of want to make sure that, you know, it's okay to get angry, but we have to kind of remember and control what we say and what we do. Because it's not good to hurt other people, you know, hit or kick them or, or be mean to them and say rude things. That's no way to treat somebody, because if somebody treated you that way, you'd be very upset too. And that's kind of one of the things that we are going to read about in our story today. So I want you to kind of keep a close eye, or, or a close ear, I should say, on how the author uses the words to kind of show us how a character might be feeling, okay? So let's go ahead and read this. And if you think back, this was something that we kind of did read about in a fine, fine school. You know, the, uh, the students were not happy with what the principal was doing, Mr. Keene. So they kind of told him how they were feeling at some point. You know, they used their words to express their feelings. And that's something that we're going to look at in this story. This is Julius, the baby of the world. Before Julius was born... Lily was the best big sister in the world. She gave him things. She told him secrets. And she sang lullabies to him every night. After Julius was born, it was a different story. Lily took her things back. She pinched his tail. She yelled insulting comments into his crib. These are mine. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes. And they stroked his sweet white fur. Lily thought his wet pink nose was slimy. She thought his small black eyes were beady. And she thought his sweet white fur was not so sweet. Especially when he needed his diaper changed. Julius is the baby of the world, chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. So what did the author do on this page here? How is Lily feeling about Julius now that he was born? She is not happy with him. She said some really mean things. Especially down here, our author showed us. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. So we know by what Lily said in this story... She is feeling very angry at, at uh, baby Julius. And we know that this is something that Lily said 
because it has these little marks here. And we'll learn more about those later, but that shows us that a character is speaking in our story. And we know that it's Lily because the author told us. Let's continue. Lily had to share her room with Julius. After Julius goes away, do I get my room back? She asked. Julius isn't going anywhere, said Lily's mother. And he didn't. He stayed and stayed and stayed. Lily was supposed to be very quiet while Julius swept, slept. After Julius goes away, can I talk like a normal person again? She shouted. Julius isn't going anywhere, said Lily's father. And he didn't. He stayed and stayed and stayed. We want Julius to grow up to be as extraordinary as you, said Lily's mother. So we must tell him constantly how beautiful he is and how much we love him. When no one was looking, Lily had her own idea. I hate you. You're ugly. So these are things that she is saying to Julius while using his crib. We want Julius to grow up to be as clever as you, said Lily's father. So we must sing him his numbers and letters whenever possible. Here they are. Oh, when no one was looking, Lily had her own idea. So we have mom and dad up here singing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Down here, Lily is singing A, J, K, Z, B, S, C, H. So she's trying to confuse him. So these are things that she is doing now. By what she is doing, how would you say that Lily is still feeling about baby Julius? Like she's still feeling really angry and she still does not like him. We know this because of the things that she is doing. These are her actions. So her actions are showing us how she is feeling about baby Julius. Lily's parents were more than a bit doubtful about leaving the two of them alone together. Lily tried to frighten Julius with her nifty disguises. She learned magic and tried to make him disappear. When that didn't work, she simply pretended that he didn't even exist. You see that up here. Lily spent more time than usual in the uncooperative chair. So she is trying all kinds of stuff to show that she really does not like Julius. So she has a lot of actions or things that she is doing to show us, I do not like Julius at all. And she is even saying those things too. She said she hates Julius. He was ugly. So she is being really quite rude. Lily's parents showered her with hugs and kisses and treats of all shapes and sizes. They even let her stay up 15 minutes later every night. It didn't matter, nothing worked. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes, and they stroked his sweet white fur. Julius is the baby of the world, chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. Lily's parents were amused when Julius blew a bubble. Can you believe it? they exclaimed. But if Lily did the same exact thing, they said, Lily, let's mind our manners, please. 
Lily's parents were dazzled when Julius babbled and gurgled. Gaga, gaga, ma, ma, Such a vocabulary, they exclaimed. But if Lily did the same exact thing, they said, Lily, let's act our age, please. Lily's parents were amazed when Julia screamed, What lung capacity, they exclaimed. But if Lily did the same exact thing, they said, Lily, let's restrain ourselves, please. So now we even have Lily copying Julius. These are more of her actions or things that she is doing to show us how she feels. She still does not like Mr. Julius. One morning while Lily was busy playing opera, her mother said, why don't you put some of that verbal exuberance to good use? Why don't you tell Julius a nice story? Ah, he's too little to understand a story, said Lily. Well, he can understand it in his own way, said Lily's mother. Okay, said Lily, smiling. Julius, the germ of the world, by me, said Lily. Once upon a time, said Lily, there was a baby. His name was Julius. Julius was really a germ. Julius was like a dust bunny under your bed. If he was a number, he would be zero. If he was a food, he would be a raisin. Zero is nothing. A raisin tastes like dirt. The end, said Lily. That story earned her 10 minutes in the uncooperative chair. So how was Lily's story? Was that a nice story that she made up for Julius? No, that was actually a really mean story. So yet another thing that she is saying and doing to show her true feelings. Lily warned her friends, Chester and Wilson and Victor, about babies. Trust me, they're dreadful, she said. She warned strangers about babies, too. You will live to regret that bump under your dress, she said. Lily ran away seven times in one morning. I'm really leaving this time, she called, and who knows where they'll find me. That same afternoon, Lily had a tea party and everyone came. Everyone but Julius. Huh, his invitation must have got lost in the mail, she explained. Lily had glorious dreams about Julius. And ghastly nightmares, too. There's her on a giant cat chasing Julius. And now, huge, evil Julius trying to eat her. Lily's parents showered her with compliments and praise and niceties of all shapes and sizes. They even let her drink her juice out of the antique china cup. It didn't matter. Nothing worked. I am the queen, said Lily, and I hate Julius. But her parents loved him. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes, and they stroked his sweet white fur. Julius is the baby of the world chimed Lily's parents. Disgusting, said Lily. When Lily's mother felt up to it, she planned a festive celebration in honor of Julius. 
All the relatives came. There was quite a spread. What's the big deal, said Lily. Haven't they seen a silly little lump before? Apparently not. All afternoon, the relatives hovered over Julius. They kissed his wet pink nose. They admired his small black eyes, and they stroked his sweet white fur. So now, look at the picture there. How do you think that Lily is really feeling? This whole time, everyone is paying attention to baby Julius. She's probably feeling kind of jealous, because nobody's really paying attention to her anymore. Let's see what happens. Disgusting, said Cousin Garland. What, said Lily. Julius, said Cousin Garland. I think his wet pink nose is slimy. I think his small black eyes are beady. And I think his sweet white fur is not so sweet. He needs his diaper changed. P.U. Lily's nose twitched. Her eyes narrowed. Her fur stood on end, and her tail quivered. Hey, you're talking about my brother, said Lily. And for your information, his nose is shiny, his eyes are sparkly, and his fur smells like perfume. Cousin Garland was speechless. He can blow bubbles, continued Lily. He can babble and gurgle. And he can scream better than anyone. Cousin Garland tried to slink out of the room. Stop, said Lily. I am the queen. Watch me closely. So what has happened now? Cousin Garland started to say mean things about Julius. And how did Lily react? Did she agree with Cousin Garland? Or did she tell her, no way, you don't talk about Julius that way. Yeah, she kind of, she was on Julius' side here and said how perfect he was. Lily picked up Julius. She kissed his wet pink nose. She admired his small black eyes. And she stroked his sweet white fur. Your turn, said Lily, handing Julius over to Cousin Garland. Kiss, admire, stroke, Lily commanded. Now repeat after me, said Lily. Julius is the baby of the world. Julius is the baby of the world, said Cousin Garland. Louder, said Lily. Julius is the baby of the world! And from then on, he was, in everyone's opinion, especially in Lily's. So what happened at the end of the story? How did Lily feel about baby Julius. Yeah, at the end, she actually thought that he was perfect too, and she really showed her true feelings that she loved him. So her actions, things that she did, she showed us that she really liked Julius because she made Cousin Garland say all those nice things about him, hold him, and admire how perfect he was. So a character can kind of show us by their actions or the things that they say to show us how they really feel. And we saw a lot of great examples of that in this story from Lily. And I really hope you like the story. This is kind of a silly, funny one. I really enjoy reading that one. I like to do the different voices and stuff like that. And I also like how we kind of see that Lily really at first hated Julius, but then she kind of ended up liking him and even loving him at the end. So we saw her true feelings. She decided she was not going to be mean anymore. So it has a nice happy ending, and I really like that. So I hope that you like this story today. We have one more story from our author, Kevin Henkes, to read later this week. So 
I will see you next time. Bye-bye, boys and girls.